Pong, Skull Island. Dun 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 dun. Or is it Jurassic Park? It's one of the two. Ooh, Isla Nubla. As we sail in the St. Kitts, you can see the island looks very similar to St. Martin. Both have numerous mountains and the coastal areas have lots of homes. St. Kitts has one big difference in that it does have Mount Lumaninga. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Which is about 3,792 feet of active volcano which is on the island. Before we get started, I wanted to remind you that we do make travel videos of the places that we've been and we offer tips and tricks to help you save money and get the most out of your trip. With that in mind, please click on the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you'll know when our next video is released. The last verified eruptions of the volcano were in 1800 years ago, which is a good thing. St. Kitts has a population of about 45,000 people, the majority of whom are of African descent. Since 1783, St. Kitts has been affiliated with the Kingdom of Great Britain, which became the United Kingdom. St. Kitts was a member of the British West Indies until gaining its independence in 1983. St. Kitts is 65 square miles, approximately 18 miles long, and on average about 5 miles across, and the speed limit is 20 miles per hour. Currently, the U.S. dollar is equal to 2.70 Eastern Caribbean dollars. When we got off the ship, we entered the port shopping area to do a little shopping before our tour. We were able to make some quick purchases and headed back to the staging area for our excursion. We had about 15 minutes before our excursion was going to start, so we were heading to the staging area and Sally realized that she had forgotten her ID and left it on the ship. Being in a foreign country without an identification is not a good thing. But the worst thing is, <clears throat> she couldn't get to the staging area and we and she could not get back onto the ship. We had 15 minutes left, so I had to run back to the room, which was not a very short run, but it was a good uh, good morning run. And the good news is, I was able to get her ID, return it back to her, and we got back into the staging area on time. On our tour to St. Kitts, we started out with a drive through the city of Bastyr. The city was very interesting. We drove on the left side of the road. Some of the interesting things we saw were the pink phone booths and people walking very close to where we were driving. The buildings were very colorful and the people were very friendly. There was a lot of history in the city and on the island. out of the city, the Atlantic Ocean was on our left side, and we passed the beach with great views of the port. The sands were black due to the volcanic nature of the island. We didn't stop here, so I'm not sure if the sand was rocky or soft, but maybe we'll stop next time. passed by the Armory Monument and Bakery on our way to our first stop, Palm Court Gardens, for a quick tour of the plants and trees that are prevalent on the island. ship and the ocean were amazing from the pool and from the lookout point above the bathroom. Returning to the coastal road we continued to our next destination passing the Buckeye estate which was formerly a sugar estate until 1935 when slave labor ended and after a violent uprising across the colonies. We also passed the Carib Brewery where the local beer is brewed. 
At one point, we stopped to look at the trees on the coast that looked like they were covered with snow. This is actually the home and nesting area of the egrets. Our driver said that in the evenings, when all of the birds return to the nest, the area is completely white. St. Kitts is home to Ross University, which is a very large veterinary medicine school. Can you imagine going to school on an island paradise like St. Kitts? Traveling on the old highway on the coast was a little rough, but we did get the opportunity to see the new highway, which is currently being built to replace the old road. Our second stop was Cabriel Bartik. This place is loaded with beautiful gardens, lots of handmade souvenirs, and breathtaking views of the rainforest and the volcano. From the lookout point, the drop to the bottom of the mountain was somewhat terrifying. One wrong step and, well, your tour would be done. To our next stop. As we traveled through Lambert, we were able to see where a majority of the damage which occurred when St. Kitts was hit by its last hurricane. The driver told us that the government condemned all of the houses on the coastal side of the road and most of the residents were relocated. He did say that some of the people refused to move and still live there, trying to rebuild. Our third stop was at Brimstone Hill Fortress National Park which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The drive up the mountain was extremely challenging, but the driver kept commenting how much easier it was for him today because he was driving one of the smaller buses. They actually do drive full-size buses up the mountain and through the gates that were definitely not designed for modern vehicles. Sally and I chose to climb up to the top of the fortress where the cannons overlooked the ocean and miles of undeveloped mountainous area. The views from this point were absolutely amazing. I can imagine what it was like back when the fortress was actively protecting the island. Firing one of those cannons at approaching ships or someone trying to attack the island. It was just absolutely an amazing sight to see. This is one of the best views on the island and so much history. There is a museum on the lower level as well as amazing views throughout the, the fortress. This is one of the best views on the island with so much history. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. You really just need to come here and see it for yourself. It's definitely worth the cost of the tour to see this site. Returning to the coastal road now, with the Atlantic on our right, we headed towards Frigate Bay, where you see some of the most beautiful and expensive homes, beach bars, resorts, and hotels. Heading back up the mountain, the driver told us that our next stop would be where a donkey and a guy with a monkey will pose for you, with you for pictures. Since we had the opportunity to hold and play with monkeys in Mahogany Bay, I was more interested in getting pictures of this amazing view of Sir Timothy's Hill, with the Atlantic Ocean on the left and the Caribbean on the right. This was another site well worth the cost of the excursion. My recommendation is that you take advantage of the shore excursions provided by the ship. The main reason is because the excursion company affiliated with the ship will design the tour based on ship time and they are guaranteed to get you back to the ship on time. And if they don't, the ship will wait for you. That is not the case if you book on your own. We have also had an unfortunate opportunity to have a shore excursion canceled in the past. When that happens, your onboard account is immediately refunded for the amount you paid, even if you purchase the excursion in advance or before the cruise. One more reason, probably the most important, is that the guides that you get with the cruise line tours are much more professional and provide a much better tour than the tours that you get that are not affiliated with the cruise line. This is just my opinion based on our experiences. I'm sure there are good tour groups that provide a good service, but when they have to sell their services like a timeshare, I get a little bit worried. We've never had a bad tour provided by the cruise line, and we have never had a good tour provided by a local vendor. At least not yet. I can't wait to help you book your cruise vac or vacation to St. Kitts. Until then, remember, Memories last a lifetime, and the best part about memories is making them. See you next time.